world is going to pass away, but only your word will remain, Lord God, Jesus. Lord God, call before it's too late, Lord God, Jesus. And let us do everything within our power and in our mind that you give us, Lord God, to draw the line, Lord God. Let it be an urgency. Give us an urgency, Lord God, to see them saved, to give them the word and not be doing it in fear, Lord God. Let us give them the teeth that you give it to us, Lord God, Jesus, because it's important, Lord God, Jesus. It is your desire that every man be saved, Lord God, Jesus. Lord God, we don't know when the time is coming, Lord God, but we know the season, Lord God. It is showing that you're coming soon, Lord God, to help us to be busy, Lord God, sharing your gospel in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Have your way. Bless your word from the north of night in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.
We can only love him because he first loved us. Yes, Thank you for giving me the a mind to love you. Yes. Yes. Build them up in their most holy faith. Thank you, Jesus. We look to you. You're the author, the finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before you, you endured the cross, despised the shame. Now you sit in the power, the authority, the majesty. Facebook or YouTube, speak Lord. Speak Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 as we conclude this chapter. Amen. As we conclude this chapter, this book of 1 Thessalonians. Perfect time for that. I've enjoyed Paul's writing to this church, reading through this book, and studying and meditating on it. I very enjoyed it. With his specific emphasis is on what, everybody? What is his emphasis? What is the theme? Second coming. Second coming. How many times is Jesus coming? One more, right? Yes, I was talking to a sister pastor. It just amazes me how many people still believe in pre trib and pre trib doctrine that's not biblical. Nowhere in the scripture it says we're going to be raptured before the tribulation. Nowhere. You can't show it to me. Taught by a false teacher, Darby. Back in the 1800s, I think that's where where he lived then. Then Hollywood, and he, you, you know, if Hollywood makes a movie about the Bible, don't believe it. That's right. Amen. <laughs> no, that's right. Care who funds it and who puts the money into it. Um, the Lord is only coming again once, and we know two or three times. Um, if you want to call it the rapture. When we get caught up, as Paul describes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, as we read from chapter 4 last week, where he said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. If you want to call that the rapture, caught up, that's fine. That's what you want to call it. We shall be caught up to meet. We shall be called together with them, the who them, the dead, that rose first, in the clouds to meet the Lord. Did it say in heaven? To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So wherever God is, if that's where heaven is, we're going to be there. Amen. <laughs> um, and then he says to them in the closing of chapter 4, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We're supposed to comfort each other Amen. with the words. We're supposed to remind each other of the coming of the Lord. Amen. If your brother or sister starts getting out of line, just remind them about the coming of the Lord. Amen. And say, don't you want to be ready? Yeah. When the Lord comes, and comfort them. Encourage. Bring up. That word comfort means to bring near. That's why... Um, one of the descriptions, on, on one of the uh, definitions of the comforter, the paraclete, which is the Holy Ghost, is to come near. That means God has come near. In fact, he's come so near to us, he's come to dwell in us, the Holy Ghost. Comfort one another with these words. 
To die the Lord is coming soon. Amen. That should comfort the believer. Yeah. It shouldn't put us at fear. It shouldn't make us anxious. It shouldn't make us be like, oh boy, Lord, give me some more time. No. <laughs> we should be comforted by knowing that the Lord, and he has to say this to this church because obviously there was some discussion about the coming of the Lord, right? Yes. In order for Paul to address this church, there had to be some questions about the coming of the Lord. They were worried about their relatives that had already died. Did they miss the promise? No, they didn't miss the promise. They're going to get up before you. You're going to meet them. They're going to be up ahead of you. You're going to meet them in the air. And you're going to be with the Lord. Comfort one another. we got to comfort one another. Verse 5, or chapter 5, verse 1. Let's read. But of the times and the season, brother, he had no need that I write unto you. When he's talking about the times and the seasons, uh, he's making uh, specific mention the difference, he knows he uses the word times and seasons. The Greek word here for times refers to a length of time. The Greek word times, length of time, indicating how long one must wait for something. Amen. While the other word for season refers to a set, particular, or a proper time that a significant event will happen or the occasion. The occasion. Now, um, there is a set time and there is a season of the Lord's coming. Amen. We don't know the day nor the hour. I can't tell you that the Lord's coming on March the 1st, 2024. Yeah. If I told you that, any, you know, you've had people predict that, right? Yep, yep. They wrong, you know, yeah. it ain't gonna happen. Because you don't know, we don't know the time nor the hour. But we do know the season. And we base the seasons off of what, church? What do we base the season off of? Of the Lord's coming. The end time. The sign. That's it. The signs of the time. How many know that the signs of the times are all around us? I know many of you don't watch news. That's all right. Do you see what's going on in the catastrophes around the world? Uh, 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 California is having all kinds of Water uh, tragedies and water storms hitting California right now. Earthquakes are happening everywhere right now. Uh, all these natural disasters are escalating. It's not like we've never had earthquakes. We've always had earthquakes. It's not like we've had disasters. But now everything is escalated because we're seeing the signs of the Lord's coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but we do understand. See, let's see how Paul. Tells you verse 2. Let's read. For yourselves know perfectly, you know, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Lord, you better be ready when he comes. Oh, he's coming as a thief in the night. Uh, uh, but I like how Paul begins to work that out. Verse 3. Uh, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. When they say peace and say, y'all know what they've been saying that they the they 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 are the, the world is crying for peace right now because there's so much turmoil. There's so many wars going on even right now as we speak. So much confusion, even in our cities. People are crying for peace. People are marching for peace. Uh, but the Bible says when they say peace and safety and sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Uh, you're not going to get away. Let me say this. You're not going to get away from the judgment of the Lord. Amen. Nobody's going to escape the judgment of the Lord. Verse 4. But ye brethren are not I want y'all to see this. You are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, it is not going to come as a thief to us because we understand the signs of the time. We understand the God, thank you. We understand the season of the Lord's return. We are in the season of the Lord's return. Now there's a few things that's going to happen before he's returned, but we are in that season. Let's read. 
Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. And we are not of mm -hmm, nor of let me say this. That's why I say, church, be careful hanging around sinners and people that aren't saved. Because darkness hath, I mean, light hath no fellowship with darkness. You hear, hear me? I don't care who they are. Family, old friends, old boo boo coon. You, we're, we are children of the light. Amen. We are children of the day. We are children of Christ. Amen. Now, I'm not saying don't work around people because you have to be a witness to those that are in darkness. But you can't fellowship with them. Yeah. You can't just, you can't, you got we don't go to parties. Right. Come on, church. We don't go to secular parties. Right. Come on, come on. We don't we don't go to the clubs. Right. We don't boogie, boogie, boogie and drop it like a hot. Right. We say, we sanctify. We've been set apart. I sound like my pastor when I said that. I felt James Edison Tyson kind of come over before a moment. This is time to say some words and have the church cracking up. <laughs> but 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 we're different. We are the light of the world. We represent. We are an ambassador to the kingdom of God. We are not children of the night. It's not now. Now watch it. When he comes as a thief, it's only going to be to those that aren't prepared. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's for those that are not watching. Those that are just caught up in this world, whether they're distracted by life and things. Though these individuals are going to miss God. Come on. Amen. Therefore, verse 6, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch watch and let us not sleep as others. Let us watch. Church, we got to be alert in this season. Amen. Church, please, please don't please don't be like so many people now. Hear me, I'm ready to say this. Please don't be like so many people don't want to hear about what's going on. I don't want to hear all that. You need to know what's going on yeah. because it, it shows you the sign of the Lord's coming. Yeah. I don't hear no. It ain't about negativity. It's about the word of God being fulfilled. Yeah. You need to know what Jesus described in Matthew 24, Luke 13, I think it was, and Mark 21. Or is it Mark 13, Luke 21? Luke 21, Mark 13. You need to know when Jesus addresses his disciples that he's given them an outline of the things that are going to happen before he comes or at the end. Yes. So we need to be aware of these things. We can't live in a bubble. Come on. We got to be watchful. Right. See, 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 one thing I found out about church, we need to pray, we need to pray. We do need to pray. I emphasize we need to pray. But you need to watch and pray. Watching is just as important as praying now. I'm going to say it one more time. Watching is just as important as praying. Because you can be praying and not watching and you be caught undone. Somebody say watch. Let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. Somebody say sober. That does mean don't be intoxicated with wine. Don't be drunk. If you're going to be drunk, be drunk in the spirit. Amen. Pray in tongues till you get drunk. Pray till the Holy Ghost wipe you out. Y'all know we don't do that enough. I can tell. I can tell by the climate in Judah life that we're not doing that. Because we come in here. Sometimes, y'all, can I, can I talk to us tonight as a pastor? We come in here too dry on Sundays. And, and it shouldn't take the praise team to put you on fire. You should be on fire because you've been in your prayer closet. You've been praying in tongues. You've been self-revival. I don't need a prophet to come in and lie to me to make me feel good emotionally, to make like I feel revived. I got the well of living water living inside of me. And all I got to do is stir it up. Don't need nobody coming to revive me when I got the Holy Ghost. You only revive that which is dead. You can't be dead if you got the Holy Ghost. If you're praying in your prayer language, you're praying in tongues and worshiping God relation with him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, by the time you come to church, you on fire. Amen. And I can tell some of y'all aren't doing it because you're coming in dry. Coming in sit like, oh, let's get through this. <laughs> I wish the church would catch on fire. Amen. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know how we 
can be like that this Sunday we're going to find next Sunday we're going to drive baby get your come on look at somebody and say get yourself together come in here when you come in here you ought to be so fired up I'm ready to praise God I'm ready to gather with the church I'm ready to shout I'm ready to lift my hands in the sanctuary with other believers I've been going through all week but I come in with a praise Be sober. Be sober. Be clear minded. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you, be clear minded. Get your mind, empty your mind of all that, all that worldly junk. Sober your mind up, sober your spirit up. Now, when it comes to the spiritual things, you need to be drunk. Yeah. But when it comes to the worldly things, you need to be sober. Amen. Let me say that again. When it comes to the spiritual thing, you need to be full and drunk. But when it comes to the world, I say, Lord, sober my mind. Get clear in my mind of worldliness and carnality and worldly lust and flesh. Be sober. Then he says, verse 7, let's read. For they that sleep, sleep. They that be drunken. That night doesn't necessarily mean night time. It just means the season. Because people, and I heard you, I mean, people get drunk in the daytime now. Amen. God's folk shouldn't be drinking. Amen. I'm going to say it again. God's folk shouldn't be drinking. Amen. But the Bible said drink a little wine from you taking that out of context, number one. Number two, uh, the Bible says wine is a monker and strong drink is raging and whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. The stuff they make in the day ain't no good. That alcohol is toxic to the human body. A doctor told me that. What kind of wine? And I remember mean, I told you this before. I said, what kind of is it? Oh, is it a certain I said, no, all alcohol is toxic to the body. All alcohol, whether it's wine, beer, disgusting tasting beer, I don't know how. People get ready for the Super Bowl. They can't wait to get chucked in, cold, nasty. I want to say something else. That stuff is disgusting. I tried to sip it. That mess. I said, how in the world can you get an appetite to foolishness? Yeah, you try to drink it, but I so be it. And I didn't try no more. <laughs> I even tried to pump. My auntie, one of my, me and Cheryl used to spend the night with my auntie all the time when we were little. My Aunt Diane, our favorite auntie. Oh, man, we used to, and she used to smoke, make it look cute. <laughs> 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 little kids. <laughs> They know who, they, that's our family member. They know who I'm talking about. I'm dying into some smoke. And I mean, just, and then they ashtrays full of that stuff. So one day I saw one that wasn't fully smoked. I tried to like that joker up, cousin Tamika. God said, no, that ain't for your body. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. We done did some foolish. I didn't, you know, I tried. You see adults doing it. You think it's all right. You're like, yeah, don't you do that. Well, don't you do it, so I won't do it. Amen. You be an example. If adults, let me stop there and pause here for a moment. If adults would be an example to their children, they would have to tell them not to do certain things. Okay. Those that sleep, sleep in the night. Man, so many people are asleep. Some people ain't dead, they're just sleep. Some people are dead spiritually, and some people are just sleep. Now, here's the thing God is still pouring out His Spirit, so there's still time for the sleep and the dead. If they would repent, if you're dead or sleep, you still got time to repent. Let's read verse 8. But let us. Who are of the day be sober. He emphasizes that again, y'all. He emphasized to abstain from wine, to keep sober, be discreet, 
To, that word sober also means in the original language to watch. Be focused and clear headed. He says, uh, be sober. Then he says, put it on what? The breastplate of faith. Breastplate. Think about it. What, where, what part of the body does the breastplate cover? The heart. The heart. So he says, guard. Remember, remember the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy? Then he says, the breastplate of faith and love. Love, you guard your heart. Make sure your heart is operating in the love of God. Amen. 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 Put it on. That's important that we love, right? Amen. We love as Christ loved. And sometimes love makes us uncomfortable because we have to say things to people that we love that don't want to hear what we got to say. Yeah. That's love. True love is going to tell people the truth. Yeah. If I lie to you, I'm just appeasing you. Yeah. Yeah. If I lie to you, I don't love you. If I'm just trying to get by and get by and just be comfortable with everybody, I can sure I can say niceties to you, but true love helps us and it, it, it strengthens us and it corrects us and it guides. True love guides us in the right direction. Amen. If you love your child, you're going to tell them, don't put that bobby pin in your hand in the electrical socket. Yeah. <laughs> you see a child, you know, children do stuff like that, right? They, they, and you know, I had one of my children, the baby girl, Samara, when she's little, you know, we tell her, don't touch that. But she had nerve to try it one day and put that thing in it, let's go talk and pop her little finger and had a little burn mark on her little finger. Told you don't touch it. <laughs> but love will tell you something. And love is not intended, true love is not intended to hurt, it's intended to correct. Amen. Amen. We must love. We must love. Love. Everything, watch this. What we do has to be motivated by love. Amen. Put on the breastplate. Cover your heart. Cover your faith. Then he says, put on the helmet of hope. For a helmet, the hope of salvation. Let me read that in that five verse. Since we believers belong to the day. Let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope and the confident assurance of salvation. The confident assurance of salvation. Verse 10. No, I'm sorry, verse 9. Thank you. For God. For God. And this is where many people, and I talked about this a week or so ago. Many people confuse this scripture with the tribulation. This scripture is not talking about the tribulation. And they say, we're not going to tribulation because God said we're not going to have, go through his wrath. Uh -huh. We're not talking about tribulation. It's talking about the day of the Lord. Amen. When his wrath is going to be poured out. Right. For God had not, so God had not appointed yeah. us to that wrath, church. He had not. Amen. Remember, go to Revelation 12, 12. Real quick, once again. This is what I can show you. Those that are streaming, you can go there as well. Revelation 12. And this is the distinguishing factor. We are not going through the church. The children of the light, the children of the day are not appointed to God's wrath. Amen. Period. But watch this. Revelation 12, 11 and 12. Read. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a So what confuses people. They, they confuse Satan's wrath with God's wrath. No, number one, ain't no comparison. Amen. I'm going to make it through that wrath, Satan's wrath. You're going to make it. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our death. We overcome, right? But that don't mean that he don't come to the earth with great wrath. Now, the wrath that Paul's talking about here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9 is the wrath of the Lord or the day of the Lord's wrath. God ain't appointed. Thank God he's going to judge his church before that time. 
In fact, I, I submit to you that the church is in judgment now. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said, you better let something, you better hope you get judged right now. Amen. I'm talking about don't judge me. You better hope somebody judges you. You better hope somebody corrects you. Amen. You better hope somebody tells you the truth. If you're walking in error, any of us, if we're walking in error, we want to be corrected. Amen. Judge my situation because I'd rather the church right now tell me, brother, you out of line. Brother, sister, you in error. I'd rather you tell me now than I miss God and have to stand in his judgment. I don't want the church hear me tonight and those that are streaming. We don't want to stand in the judgment of the Lord. Because this judgment is coming with you. Oh, it, it, Satan, they say Satan's wrath. His wrath, Satan's wrath is just a little bit of this persecution <laughs> compared to the wrath that God's going to bring. Yes, right. He's going to unleash the lake of fire right. with fire and brimstone. Yes. Those that try to run from him, oh, they're going to try to run. That's why they build all these bunkers now. They're talking about all these billionaires and millionaires. And movies and, 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 and politics build these bunkers. I can tell you right now, politics and billionaire and millionaire, you're not going to hide from the great one. He said they're going to run to the mountains and to the cave to try to hide from his wrath. They won't be able to hide. There's nowhere you can go from the presence of the Lord. Build your bunker a hundred feet deep. He's coming to get you. They're going to say, they don't even type, rocks fall on me. Because they ain't going to want the wrath of God. I ain't worried about Satan's wrath. I got the blood of Jesus. I overcame by the blood. And the God, I thank you. We overcome by the blood. And we're worried about testimony. You think I'm worried about Satan? He's a defeated foe. I don't want to face God's judgment. We are not appointed until the appointed us to his wrath. But to obtain what? Salvation by the Lord. Wait a minute, I thought we already saved. We're saved to be saved. Amen. Look at somebody next to you and tell them you ain't made it yet. Amen. Come on, everybody look at somebody and tell them you ain't made it yet. Amen. Tell them if you are, saved, you are saved, you saved to be saved. Amen. This that that devil doctrine of of one saved, always saved. That's a lie from the pit. Right. When Jesus comes, we're going to see salvation at its completion. Amen. That's going to be, do you know that's going to be the completion of our salvation? Yes. That's why the Bible says, He that endures yes. to the end. Yes. To the yes. You got what Why do I got to endure? Mm. That's good. What, is, what, is, what does endure mean? That ain't, that ain't a good word. Yeah. That means you're going to suffer some stuff yeah. before the end. Yeah. Endure. Even enough, he said, do a hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He's bringing, he's going, we're going to obtain, watch this, salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That word salvation comes from the Greek word soteria. Soteria, soteriology. You, since I, you know, did my theological studies, one of the studies is soteriology, which is the study of salvation. And and when you deal with soteria, sotera, you you dealing with being rescued, safety, delivered, uh, salvation to be saved or a saving. Y'all, church, we're saved to be saved. You can't give up now. Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint. If you faint, what's that scripture? If you faint in the day of adversity, you're what? Who knows that? You're what? Strength is small. Yeah, strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, church, we can't faint. Amen. That's why we come. That's why it's important to come to Bible study. Amen. Amen. That's why it's important to be at church to get the word of the Lord because we got to know what's going on. I feel sorry for these churches that the pastors ain't talking about in time now. Yeah, I do. I feel. I feel. I was watching. I think it was Traders Point Church here in the city. One of my, some of my family members go there, and they put up on Facebook that, that the pastor was talking about marrying and dating on this past Sunday. I'm thinking, how sad we living in the day. And then the one with addressing that, but we 
living in a day in a season of the end and pastors are talking about on Sunday mornings dating and relationships. Mm, oh my God. Oh my We're at the end of time. Society is crumbling before our faith. And you go into church to get a cute message on how to date. I said, how sad, and people are deceived. Amen. Please tell me. Point me to the signs of the Lord. Come on, church. Amen. 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 But to obtain, see, we still have to obtain salvation. Amen. We got it, but we ain't there yet. Even Paul said, I, I haven't arrived, I haven't obtained. But I press. Church, we got to keep on pressing. Amen. We got to keep on pressing. For the mark of the pride of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. We got to run this race with patience. We got to endure until the end. We can't give up. We can't throw in the towel. We can't get weary in well doing. We got to stay on the wall for Jesus. We got to keep winning souls. We got to keep discipling souls. We got to keep telling people that the Lord loves them and He calls you to come out of darkness into His marvelous light. Verse 10 Who died for us? He died. He paid too much of a price for us. But he did that. That whether we're awake or asleep. Or asleep. Now y'all know who's asleep, but who they are. We should live together with him. Y'all, here's the beauty of living saved and sanctified and holy. One day it's going to be worth it. Everything that you gave up for the Lord, and you should have given up some stuff. Should have gave up some stuff and should have given up some stuff. Everything you gave up for the Lord, it's going to be worth it when eternity sets in place. Yes. Think about that. Everything people talked about you, people lied on you, people people didn't want to be around you. You didn't want to be around people. Can I tell you, can I, can I say something? To those that are really walking with the Lord, it can be long. Amen. I'm going to say it again. When you are truly trying to walk with the Lord, it's lonely. I'm going to say it again. If, if you want to be in the limelight, you want to be liked by everybody, you're going to miss Jesus. Because those that walk with Jesus, it's a lonely road. Ask John the Baptist. Or ask all of the apostles. Ask the prophets of the Old Testament. Walking with the Lord and being committed to the Lord's kingdom is a lonely road. Yes. That's good. That's right. Because you're gonna be, you gonna be. Jesus said they hated me, right. and if they hated me, yeah. He said you're gonna be hated. Of, now we're a holy nation. He said you're gonna be hated of all nations for my name's sake. When you really stand for Jesus, people are gonna hate you. You, if you if you that person that need to be liked, you in trouble. Amen. You in that you that person that needs validation from people, you in trouble. Because you got to know that God is with you and that you're with God. Amen. The Paraclete, the Comforter, the one that walks alongside of you, who died for us. And whether we sleep, whether we awake, I don't know. Can I say this? Before the Lord comes, I don't know if some of us gonna die. I may die before the Lord comes. But whether we're awake or whether we sleep, yes. we're going to live together. I'll reject it in a minute for that thought. Reject what, Pastor? Whatever it is. Mm. Verse 11. Wherefore, here he says it again. Remember he said this in 418. Now he says it in 511. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And edify that word comfort means to get near, to invite, to, to console, consolation, to exhort, to entreat, to pray, invoke. That word comfort is low. But then we get to the word edify. Edify is a house builder. Edify means to construct. Edify means to build up, to embolden. So he says, when he says to edify, one another. He's saying build each other up. Just like the Bible talks about the, the woman in Proverbs, what is it, 31? 
A wise woman buildeth her house is edifier. That's what edifying that's what edifying is, is to build. A build to construct, to, to build up, to embolden. So he's telling us to comfort yourselves together, get together, come together. So, see, that's why the church is supposed to be together. Amen. And edify one another. You can't be edified by yourself. I mean, you can in prayer, in prayer language. But, but, but you need human, you do need some human touch and some, and, and God is called his body. Let me put it like this. God is called his spiritual body, the one he died for, for the church, the ecclesia. We need one another. Not one person is the church. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Not one person, I'm just a member in the church. Yeah. People say, I'm the church. No, you're not. You're a member. The church is the body of believers. A clean ecclesia. Are you with me? Yeah. So we ought to comfort one another. We ought to edify one another. Verse 12, let's read. And we beseech you, brothers, to And esteem them very highly in love for the Lord's sake and be at peace. People don't follow this scripture. Very few people follow this scripture. When people come in my office as a pastor, instead of giving advice, they tell me what they're going to do. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, read the scripture again. No pain to labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that most people don't want a pastor. They want somebody that's going to agree with them. They want somebody to stroke their ego. Somebody to cheerlead it. A life coach. Pastors, let me say this, pastors are not life coaches. I didn't go to school to be a life coach. God didn't call me to be a life coach. I'm going to be a life coach. I'm going to carry that. I'm not a coach. Amen. <laughs> I'm a shepherd. Amen. I'm an under shepherd called by God. I'm a watchman on the wall. Right. I'm to exhort, reprove, and rebuke. But people don't want that. Amen. But the Bible says, watch this. To know them. See, that's see, here's another one of my problems. Folks, let this church to follow some foolishness. Amen. Don't even know who they follow. Amen. You ain't. That's true. You're supposed to know them that labor among you. Amen. Why do you need to know somebody that's labored among you? You need to know where they're in the faith. Yeah. Come on. You need to know what they believe, how they live it. Yeah. I don't know what these buses are living, these TV celebrity preachers. Yeah. Following folk. Wow. Going to a conference and feel a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're going to come tell me God said, well, it seems like if I'm your pastor, God would have told me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> If I'm called by God, yeah. now if I ain't called by God, why did you follow me in the first place? Amen. Amen. Hey. I didn't come to you because I knew what you were going to say and I know what the Lord told me. Mm. Oh. What kind of foolishness is that? Mm. But that's the kind of foolishness pastors have to deal with. I'm talking about you, Pastor. I ain't talking about no Ireland. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Verse 9. Let's move on, 14, because y'all got quiet when I talk about that. <laughs> Verse 14. Read. Warn! See that you none render unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. 
Which one? See, let's, let's, just, let's just start with this time. The first thing he said, we get into verse 14. He says, warn them that are unruly. Warn, see, that don't sound good, does it? If somebody's unruly and you warn them, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I always say this. I know I'm your pastor when I rebuke you and you stay. Amen. If I rebuke you and you leave, and you mad because I rebuke you, I was never your pastor. You wanted something else from me. All right, pastor. We're supposed to warn them that are unruly. That are unarranged. That word unruly means unarranged, distorted, going in two different, uh, almost double minded. In some, and here's another word for unruly insubordinate. Insubordinate. Amen. Uh oh. Uh oh. Y'all know what insubordination is, right? Yeah. Who knows what insubordination is? Yeah. So the pastor, what's insubordination? The insubordinate means that you don't. Uh, yeah, you don't follow your yeah. supervisor. Like you wouldn't follow your supervisor, you'd be an insubordinate. Mm -hmm. um, You've been disrespectful. Denied. Um, Warn them that are insubordinate. insubordinate. Mm -hmm. Verse, then he says, comfort the feeble-minded. Mm -hmm. The next thing, that means the little spirited, the faint-hearted. Sometimes we all go through those moments. Mm -hmm. And we need to be comforted. Yeah. Comfort the feeble-minded. Those that the spirit's been broken. Maybe, maybe they have some kind of loss, some kind of grief that they're experiencing. Yeah. We're supposed to comfort them. Um, the faint hearted. Then he says, support the weak or care for the weak. What's the weak? The more feeble, the impotent, the sick, without strength, those that are weaker. So we're supposed to support, support them when they're weak. We're supposed to help care for them. We're supposed to, as a church family, we're supposed to reach out. We're supposed to strengthen and pray for them. Amen? Amen. Then he says, be patient towards Amen. all men. And, you know, watch your conduct with people, watch how you relate to people. Bible says, a sharp, uh, uh, Proverbs 15, 1, uh, and I want to make sure I put it right. A soft answer turns away wrath. Thank you. But grievous words stir up anger. So why be patient, Trump? And, and that's one of the areas the Lord's working with me on, how to address people. Because I, I know I can be sharp. I know that. So be patient toward Praise the Lord. And the Lord has helped me. He has. I'm trying to tell you, he's helped me. Verse five. I mean, the, the next one. Don't render or give or recompense evil for evil. In other words, don't you return evil for evil. Somebody's wicked. Don't you return wickedness. Amen. Next one. Follow that which is good. Follow that which is good. Both among yourselves and all men. Yep. Both among yourselves and all men. Then he says, rejoice evermore. evermore. That word rejoice means to be cheerful, to be happy, to be glad, joyful, evermore. I mean, all time. Amen. Church, we're supposed to be rejoicing at all time. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah, we have moments where we get feeble-minded, little, little, we faint-hearted. But don't let that, don't. here's what I say. Depression is going to try to come to all of us. But make sure you got depression and depression doesn't have you. Amen. That makes sense. I, I'm not crazy to think that 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 sometimes we don't feel low in spirit. I'm not saying that all of us do at some point. But don't let it have you. Amen. Just like grief, I tell people as a chaplain and I teach chaplaincy, I tell those students, I said, uh, we teach people you can have grief, but don't let grief have you. Right. Grief, you, if somebody dies, you have some form of loss, you're going to experience grief. Yeah. You're going to experience, it's just, it's just part of the human, right. something God put in his heart. Right. Even Jesus wept. Yeah. But we don't let grief have us. Right. There's healthy grieving and there's unhealthy grieving. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So he says, uh, be patient towards all men. Render no evil. Fit. Follow that which is good among yourselves. Now, rejoice. We're supposed to be rejoicing. Somebody say rejoice. Somebody say rejoice evermore. Always. <laughs> What's the next one? Pray. Now how can I do that? Because I can't be on my knees all the time. That means you, you should, we should have, can I say this? And I've said it before and I'm saying it again tonight. We should have a spirit of prayer always on us. 
You should never be such a carnal place that you can't stop and pray. Amen. I don't care where you're at, where you're going, you should always be able to pray. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Make sure you have a continue. Prayer is our lifeline to God. Amen. That is our prayer is a powerful weapon of the church. Amen. The Bible says the fervent, effectual, effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Our prayer can do so much more for us. Yeah. Prayer do more for you than worry. Yeah. If you worry about it, you can, guess what? Here's the stress of worry. You worry about something that never gets solved. Same, same, same. Only thing it's going to do is stress you out, possibly till you get sick. Yeah. Think about that. Worrying will get you sick. Yeah. It will. So guess what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to pray about it. Yeah. I'm going to give it. I'm going to take it to the Lord. Leave it there. I'm going to trust. Come on, church. We'll be much better if we pray and learn to pray and pray without ceasing and pray in tongues. Yes. 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 Pray without ceasing. Don't ever stop praying. Then he says, in everything. Remember, yes. always say, don't even say for everything. He said, in everything, yes. give thanks. Why? It is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then he says, quench not the spirit. The spirit is capitalized. It's the, it's the spirit of God, the pneuma, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. In other words, don't extinguish God. If, can I, Judah Life, come on Judah. Judah's got to come alive. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all been quenching the spirit. You be in service and you just, you flat. Come on, quit quenching. You're quenching the spirit. I'm not going to get emotional. Put everything into it. Amen. Cry out to the sometimes. You, you know, you quenching the spirit. You, you, you hindering the spirit. Whether it's in worship, whether it's something he's leading you to do. That word quench means to extinguish. It's like putting the fire out. Amen. It don't take all that, baby. It takes all that and more. Amen. You're quenching. You extinguishing. You're putting out, subduing. You ain't supposed to subdue the spirit. Amen. You're supposed to subdue the flesh. You ain't supposed to extinguish the spirit. You're supposed to extinguish the flesh. You're not supposed to put out the spirit. You're supposed to put out the flesh. Get out! <laughs> Quit quenching the spirit of God. Let go. I, I want to see a Sunday when we come in here. Everybody just starts praising God like they're crazy. Amen. Get out of your normal self. That ain't my nature. It ain't your nature when it comes to worship, but it let it be something you like. Same, same, same. You ever seen people say, I, I don't get emotional, but it's something they like? Yeah, all over the place. You can't get them to stop talking about them. Yeah. Why aren't you that about the spirit? Why aren't you that excited about worship? Why aren't you that excited about praise? Why are you quenching the spirit of God? Why are you trying to subdue the spirit? Quench not the spirit, the pneuma, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. Then he says, despise not Prophesies, which means don't set it not and don't 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 least esteem prophesying. Prophesying is very important. And prophesying deals with prediction scripturally. Yeah. Scripturally. So if a person now I'm talking about a prophet, see the difference between a prophet and prophesying. The 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 so some people think because they, they told somebody something they're a prophet. That doesn't make you a prophet. <laughs> There's a gift of prophecy that's not the office of a prophet. Right. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. But he said, despise not prophesying. Just don't despise. If God gives a word that's scripturally sound, don't despise it. Amen. Don't don't put it down. Don't 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 nullify it. Esteem it. Amen. Then he says, prove all things. All things. Somebody said, prove all things. Prove all things. That word prove means to test. It means to approve. It means to discern. It means to examine. It means to try. Let me say that again. Test it. Amen. Prove it. Yeah. Discern. You in this hour? Yes. Amen. Look how the whole world got to see during the pandemic. Because we listen to the media that's owned by the Satanists that kept drilling in our heads their agenda. And to the discerning and examining and proving it, Come on. we believed it. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. What, 
with Jesus? What is the first thing Jesus said when they said, when is the end? When is the time to come? What's the first thing he said? Take heed. Let no man. This is when you got to prove stuff. Prove it. I wish more people would have heard from the Lord. When the Lord said, stop listening to the lies, I wish more preachers would have heard that. Amen. When the Lord said, cut off that TV and stop listening to their lies, I wish more preachers. But instead of doing that, they got on their pulpits and told people to beware of the big boogie woogie COVID. <laughs> and fear just produces fear. And what does the Bible say? Fear has torment. That's why everybody was tormented because nobody proved what was going on. And nobody said, Lord, what is this? You got to prove it. This hour of deception, we, y'all, we live in a great hour of deception right now. Amen. I'm telling you here, Pastor, tonight, we are, those that are listening via YouTube or Facebook, hear me. This is an hour of deception, and we're going to see deception at, at an all-time high. Yeah. Yes. But it doesn't match up with the word, and something your spirit doesn't discern, you better prove it. You better try it. You better test it. Amen. And they match in this book. Then he says, hold fast to that which is good. Hold down. Keep to stay. Stay where it's good. Why, why do you think he says, hold fast that which is good? Why, did, why would I think he would say that, church? And then the other stuff was coming. Hold fast. Think about this. He said, hold fast to that which is good. Come on. I, I, I want some more. Why would you think he would say, hold fast to that which is good? I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of false stuff coming your way. The negative. Keep the faith. Stay in the armor. Stay in the Okay. Let me, let me rephrase this. Y'all, y'all right. They're not wrong. But everything now that's good is bad. And everything that was bad is now becoming good. Satanism and demonic stuff is glamorized now. That's right. And they promote that, but when you say something that is good concerning the word of God, if you say something that's concerning the Bible, the word of God, which is good, you are evil. Hold fast. The reason you need to hold fast is because you're going to be tempted to be pulled to that side. Oh yeah, you're going to be tempted. Hold fast. Hold. Keep. Then he says abstain from all All appearance of evil, yes, yes, mischief, yes. hurtful. That word evil contains the devil. Right. Sinners, wicked. Abstain, refrain. That word abstain means to refrain from all mischief, hurtful, the devil, sinners, the wicked. Shh. You got quiet, church. That word evil is loaded. That, everything that I mentioned is a part of that word in the original language. The devil, wicked, sinner, mischief, hurtful, abstain, refrain from the appearance. He didn't even say, he didn't say refrain from evil. He said the appearance of evil. Don't The appearance. Sitting next to you that look like liquor, and you on social media showing it. Oh my mm. goodness. <laughs> you give the appearance of evil. Yeah, that's right. Don't let your Good. Good. refrain from the very appearance. You hanging out with a bunch of homosexuals, oh right, and you don't want to be labeled. Come on. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> You're hanging out with a bunch of fornicators. You're hanging out with a bunch of thieves. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about witnessing to them. No, I'm hanging. Yeah. I think my mic went out. You're hanging with them. It may be the battery because it looked like the battery went out. 
You hang it with them. The Bible, Paul warns the church as he closes this chapter in this book. He said, abstain and refrain from the all appearance. Touch not, handle not, <laughs> stay away from it. You ain't you can't grow spiritually. Oh God. Yeah, you gotta minister to sinners, you gotta witness to them, but you shouldn't be hanging out. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. If they don't feel a certain way around you, something is wrong. They feel comfortable in their devilment around you. Something is abstain from the very appearance of evil. <clears throat> then verse 23, let's read. The very God of peace sanctify you holy. Let me read verse 23 of the Amplified, and I'm done. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, to separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and whole and undamaged. Consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming. Shh. How are you going to be set apart but you always in the mix? Darkness has no fellowship with light and light hath no fellowship with darkness. When light appears, darkness has to dissipate. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Read all believers with a holy kiss as brothers and sisters in God's family. I solemnly charge you by the Lord to have this letter read before all the con Make sure they hear this. Amen. So there's no misunderstanding about the coming of the Lord and what he expects from us as his believers, as the church, as the ecclesia. There should be an expectation of sanctification. And then he says at the conclusion, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Church, the Lord is coming. And he wants us to be sanctified through and through. Separated, consecrated for his purpose. You can't be consecrated and separated for his purpose and you always running with the wrong crowds. We don't get our advice from carnal people. If you listen to carnal people, don't even go to church trying to give you spiritual come knowledge. On, what on, you should be doing, what the pastor should, your pastor should be doing. Quit listening to carnal folks and get in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Any questions? I'm done. did not go back and now they're having their you know church at home they're sitting at home and we're watching a lot of these different you know conferences on their they're unstable mm -hmm. they're out of the will of God mm -hmm. and they're in trouble spiritually God never intended you to stay at home and watch services of exactly. all the false preachers on TV yeah. or YouTube Know them that labor among you. The church is supposed to gather as much as possible. Even if it gets to the point where it costs us our life, we're supposed to gather. There may come a time, I'm telling you, there may come a time that we have to gather underground. And I don't mean underground, underground. You know what I mean? We may have to go to somebody's house. It may, it may, it may come. Because I'm telling you, the principality and darkness and spirit that's governing this world is out to stop the church of the living God. Amen. 
But Jesus said these words, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Any other comments? That's a good good. Yeah. I like the fact that the word tells us to abstain from the very appearance of evil when he called us to be um, a peculiar people. Right. Not to, like we always say, be a chameleon. We're not supposed to look like the world. Our dress, our appearance uh, should be different where people can see how we, our presentation and their, the world presentation, it shouldn't be the same. Yeah. No. Yeah. It should be a, be a dark, great difference. difference. Yeah. And God always, and I say this and I'll keep saying it until the Lord comes or until I die. The Lord set apart his church, Old Testament and New Testament. He set them apart from the world. He set them apart from the heathen. He set them apart from the Gentiles because he didn't want them following strange gods, which would lead them into idolatry. He, he has not changed. I don't care what this modern church says. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was serious about holiness, Old Testament. He's serious about holiness in the New Testament. He follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Thank you for the Lord for that tonight. Yeah. If you don't know how to be saved, you must be born again of water and spirit. Acts 2.38 is the New Testament way of salvation for the New Testament believer. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved. He said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of grace. For the promises unto you, your children, and to them that are far. There's only one way to be saved. You must be born again Amen. of water and spirit. We love you. God bless you. Hope to see you in the live, true to life service soon. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen.